Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. Today, we don't actually do anything that has any visual change or any, you know, like, uh, game changes. We start laying down the ground, the base of our research system. So basically what we do is we create a new array inside of our tower script called research and it keeps a float of the time the research actually starts. And um, using this, we're going to be able to tell if our research is complete or not. We can also give it some research info, as you can see over here on the right. So we have this first research called Tradesman. It costs 5,000 gold and also costs 50 silk. Takes 5 minutes to complete and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing today, guys. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so today we're going to start doing the research tab. So this tab over here it is a bit empty right now. Well, I mean, it's not filled with data. And uh, we're going to start working on this. Now, this is a big step we need to take. We're going to be declaring a new um, a new array inside of the tower script. So, let's do that. We will double click on the tower script and actually open it up Open it up in um, model develop. Now, over here, we keep track of a public int array of currencies, a public int array of loot, because those are numbers. You need, you need to keep certain track of how many rocks you have, how many gold you have. Now as for the research, what I was thinking of doing is we could actually keep track of a float and that would be the start time of that research because the, the research is going to have a duration, it's going to have a gold cost, it's going to have all that kind of stuff that we can keep somewhere else. But in terms of saving this, in terms of keeping it in memory somewhere in between the uh, the game loads and the game shut down and all that kind of stuff. I think we could only be tracking one, when exactly did the research start. So I will declare a public float that I call research, like this. Now using this I will go over to my, well, we do the exact same thing we always do. So we're going to go down to the save and the load function. now. Let me just enable my region, enable code folding, and fold stuff by default. Okay. Right, so we're going to find our load, and also our save, here it is, that's our load. Let's go at the very bottom, and we're going to say research is equal to a new float array of enum that get names. We get... Um, all the names of the research array, I mean the type that we don't have at the moment. We're about to create it really soon. Dot length, and um, you know what? Before we go any further, so we don't confuse everybody, we are going to go create that research type. To do it, I will create a new C sharp script. Call this the research manager. Quickly open it up and um, before we do anything in this script, we're going to do stuff later on. We're going to go up here and declare a public enum and this is going to be the research. And I'll write it the same exact way because this is a type and the other one was an array. So the compiler is going to be able to tell which one is the type and the array. So let's start with the first one, just the first one to test stuff out. This is going to be my first research called Tradesman. It's basically going to um, give you better buy cost on your item. Okay, so we've got our research. Let's go back to actually coding our stuff here inside of the tower script that's in the load local function. And um, how exactly should we be loading this? Now, we need a string. We need to save an actual string when we want to well, put something in the player prep. Now, what I was thinking about doing is simply put the name of the enum. So you're going to be saving a float and the, the key of that float is going to be tradesman in this case. And um, if there's multiple then it's going to do multiple stuff. So let's do a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero as long as i is smaller than research.length i++. Plus plus. And then Let's get the name of that very uh, enum. So string research name is equal to enum dot get value values. We're gonna get all the values out of the research 
type. Then we're going to do a get value i to string. Now that sounds really complicated, but what we're doing is getting all the values from the enum. I don't know, there, there's probably a way to get only one of those. Hmm. And this one didn't seem to work last time I tried. Okay, so let's just do get values. Type of research, then we get the value at the index i dot to string, and this is going to give us the name of our enum. So in this case, tradesman. And we can simply say, well, research, this is the load local, so research at the index i is equal to player pref dot get float, and we're getting the float called research name. Let's copy this hold for loop over here, and we're going to go paste it at the very bottom of the save local. So under save local, we do the exact same thing, we get the name, but instead of actually doing research is equal to something, we do player pref set float. We're saying it at research time, that works, but we're setting research at the index i, like this. Now this way we should actually be able to create our array and keep it in memory every time we load the game back up. Okay, do we have any errors? We don't seem to have any error. Let's go over to the research manager. And inside of here is where we declare a lot of nice stuff. So, um, We've got the enum up here, which is going to be um, for every single research we add, we put it in the enum. That's simple. We're going to need something else. We're going to need something called, well, I mean, that I call research info. And I'll just make sure that this is serializable at the same time so I can actually modify it in the inspector. So system serializable above the structure, just like this. And this is going to take in a research. Research. This is going to take in a gold cost, public int loot cost, public loot, loot, and public float duration or I mean research time and this is where we're gonna define um, this is where we're gonna define all the information about the research so the research trademan is going to have well first a pointer to the research so the tradesman then a cost in gold a cost in loot so if it's on zero we'll just hide it if it has a cost in loot then we can add it to the uh, gold cost so say you need 5,000 gold and you need like 50 silk, something like that. Then um, we just type in 15 here and in the loot we put silk. Then as for the research time, this is how long is it going to take for this research complete. Okay, great, so we've got these. Let's go ahead and start coding our research manager. We're going to start with a uh, public static instance, so public static research manager instance set get we go and we do a public void I mean private void private void and this one is going to be an awake because I want to be calling it from the tower script so uh, the instance needs to be set before I call it from the tower script so let's just make sure that this is a awake and we only do a private void awake in here I mean uh, instance is equal to this all right. Now, what else do we need? We pretty much need a public research info array, research info, and uh, since it is serializable and this one is public, this is going to allow us to modify it directly in the inspector. So we'll see that in a moment. Actually, you know what? Let's actually go see it right now. So we've got the tower script. I'm going to add my research manager to the tower script. This way it actually persists through scene and I can use all the information um, from everywhere. So research are not only going to affect in-game stuff, they might affect say uh, when you're out of the game or when you're doing something and the research time, say it takes five minutes to complete the research, then uh, that time is still going to be counted when you're outside of the game. So if you're just waiting in the hub, then your research are still being completed. All right. So we've got the research manager over here on the right. We have only one research right now, so we're going to put in the size 1. 
and this is what we get we get an element and this one has the enum we need so it's going to be for tradesman gold cost let's put that on like 5000 and the loot cost 50 50 what 50 silk research time this is in seconds so say we do 5 minutes that's 5 times 60 300 and here we go we've got our first research well technically we've got our first research in memory um, but before we actually close this off and try to use it we're gonna be adding some more information to the research manager um, the first one is a easy to access bit array that we can simply look and be like okay so is this research unlock yes or no this is what we're gonna be calling in like maybe an update or maybe something that uses research in general so I'm going to start and declare a private bit array unlocked research I'll make this um, a just I'll make it private and I'll access it using a uh, public function so private bit array unlock research from outside I will be calling this update research bit array function and the research I mean the update uh, research bit array is going to pull the actual um, research thing we've got inside of our tower script so let's start by actually declaring our bit array so unlock research is equal to a new, new bit array of the tower that instance research length so now we've got our bit array of research let's do int i is equal to zero as long as i is smaller than the tower that instance that research length i plus plus so far so good now um, this is where we get data from our float array and what I'll be doing is if the tower that instance that research at the index i if it's equal to zero that means the research either has not been start or we don't even have data in our player pref so what I'll be doing if that's the case I will simply say unlocked research at the index actually we don't do index since this is a bit array we're gonna do dot set i to false that that means it's not unlocked it's not you know it's not <laughs> research yet and it's not completed now um, now we're going to be checking. We can't simply say this is not going to be set and if it's on a number that is not zero then it's going to be set because that might not be the case. You might actually be saying okay so um, what I have in my array is three but the research duration is five so we're still not ready to actually say that this research is completed. So we're gonna have to find a way to find a global time in our save now we still don't save the time um, the time played in total but we're going to be doing that really soon so I'll just be putting some question mark here uh, but basically it's going to look like this so time dot time minus the tower dot instance dot research at the index i is bigger than research info at the index i duration do we have duration we don't we said uh, research time there it is and if it is bigger that means we did finish the research and we can say unlock research dot set i true and if that's not the case then we go back to saying unlock research dot set i false okay so this is not really going to work until we have our global time and that's something we'll be doing in the next episode um, because we're already getting a little bit sidetracked here but uh, guys I think that is going to be almost it we just need to do one more thing before we close this off and act it's actually to make some helper function so uh, this is a public void update research bit array which is cool we're gonna be calling this from outside and um, let's actually make some helper function down here so public research info get research info that takes in the parameter a research R. and all we're going to be saying here is return research info 
int r. We do another one just below this, a public boolean is research unlocked. Again, research r. And this is what we're going to be calling from outside quite often. Return unlock research. Oh, unlocked research, the bit array dot get at the index int r. And this way we can actually check. But before doing this, we um we need to run the update research bit array at least once. So as far as the update research bit array, I think I'm gonna be calling it well at the beginning of the game, that's for sure. And then every time a research is completed, we don't really need to be calling it at other times. We don't really need to be updating that bit array uh, often. But uh, here it is. So that's pretty much it. Let's take this and move it over to the tower script in the start function over here. And uh, we'll do it somewhere here. So research, oops research manager dot instance update research bit array just like this now if we head over to our game we haven't done any like a uh, visual change and it's not actually affecting our gameplay just yet but let's still make sure that we haven't broken anything so I'm starting from the preloader everything seems to be running well we don't get any errors and um, yeah everything seems to be qu working quite well so we've done a nice ground for our research and we're going to be continuing in in the next few episodes guys next one is going to be about making the global timer that we also need to save somewhere so this way we can actually tell the player so um you've been playing this game for 16 hours or something like that and uh it's just stats that we need for our research in general so guys thanks a lot for watching if you like this or if you learned something please Leave me a like, I always appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, you can leave them in the Facebook page or down there in the comment section below. So guys, again, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.